So hi guys, uh, let's do some recap for the chapter 2.3 electronic configurations uh, from our previous lessons on Sunday. And here are some terms that you need to uh, recap and revise. First of all, the electronic configurations, also known as the SPDF notation. Okay, the second one is orbital diagram, which you can use either a box represent one orbitals, or you are using a line to represent one orbitals. Remember, one box for one orbital or one line for one orbitals. Okay, so both of these is two of the methods that you can use to show how the electrons is arranged in one atom. So in order to construct an electronic configuration or to draw its orbital diagram, we need to have the basic three rules or principle. So first of all is the Aufbau principle. So in Aufbau principle, it says that electrons are arranged in the atomic orbitals in order of increasing energy. I hope you still remember about the raindrops diagram, or we can also call it as the diagonal rules. Okay, so arrange accordingly for the S, P, D, and F um, subshell, and then we do a diagonal right lines. Okay, to see how the orbitals is arranging in the order of increasing energy level. So we we'll start with one S, followed by two S, followed by two P, three S, and then we have three P, four S. Then continue with three D, four P, and five S. If you wish to continue, then you continue the diagonal line. Therefore, we have to arrange according to the raindrops. Okay, so 1s followed by 2s, and then 2p, and then 3s, and then 3p, and then 4s, 3d, back to 4p. So some of the complications will occur when you come to 4s, 3d, um, subshell. Okay, so please pay attention huh? because normally if you arrange the first few subshell, you will see the energy level increasing accordingly from energy level 1 and then 2 and then 3. Then suddenly it comes to 4 and then back to 3 again and then back to 4 again. So please pay attention to these combinations of the subshell. 4S first and then after that um, back to 3D. Okay, so this is follow the Aufbau principle. Alright, so for our second principle, we call it as the Pauli exclusions principle. So in Pauli exclusion principle, says that no two electrons in the same atoms can have the same set of four quantum number and LMS. If you remember the Nasi Lemak Masat Sambal. So every single electron, they will have different sets of the quantum number. Okay, the different sets of quantum, it means with this four number, at least one of the number will be different. So for example, if I got one zero zero positive half, then another electrons cannot have the same uh, set of a number. So at least the spin will be different. It become one zero zero negative half. So make sure every single electron have different sets of the number. Or in another simple word, we can, we can say uh, each electron will get one uh, pack of nasi lemak. Ah, so they have their own sets of quantum number. All right. So let's look at these examples over here. We have beryllium with the proton number four. So for the electronic configurations, it start with one s two, and then two s two. So again, for s orbital, maximum of electron it will be only two electrons. So for the orbital diagram, one s two and two s two. Okay, so in Pauli exclusion principles, um, in all orbitals, it will have different uh, speed. One up, one down, one up, one down. So if let's say you see some of the questions give you both electrons pointing towards the same directions, it means this disobey the Pauli exclusion principle. Or we can say it violate the principles already. Now that means it's uh, disobey. Lah. Okay. Then the next rule we have over here is the Hans rules. In Hans rule, it says that electrons are added to the degenerate orbital singly first before pairing up. I hope you still remember that the degenerate it means um, the orbitals which have the same energy. 
Okay, uh, it normally refers to P or D or F subshell when you have more than one orbitals. So if you still remember, in P subshell, we have three orbitals, the negative one, zero, positive one. In D subshell, we have five orbitals. And in F subshell, we have seven orbitals. So when you have more than one orbitals, then you will have the degenerate orbitals. Uh, so there is no degenerate orbital for S because for S sublevel you have only one sub uh, one orbital. Okay, so let's look at the example of fluorine. So for fluorine we have nine electron because proton number equals to nine. Huh? Okay, so we start with one S two, and then we have two S two. For the nine electron. Four have already filled with left with another five more electrons. So this five electron will go to the 2p subshell. Okay, so in total, 2, 2, 5, the total number of electrons should be the same as your proton number. So we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. So fill in accordingly into your orbital diagram, 1s2, 2s2. And when you come to p subshell, then you need to apply your Hans rules. Okay, um, arrange the electrons singly first before pairing up. So the word singly first, you must uh, every single arrows, you might it must pointed the same direction. Okay, so one, two, three singly, and then pair up four and five. So all together, there is five electron in our two p um, subshell. Okay, five orbital in the 2p subshell. So all these three rules, the Aufbau principle, Pauli exclusion principle, and also Hans rules, are used all the time for you to construct an electronic configuration and also the orbital diagram. So in the diagram over here, it shows the periodic table for all the elements um, that we are going to learn. So for your information, Elements in the periodic table is arranged according to their portal number or atomic number. So as you can see over here for hydrogen with a portal number 1, that means hydrogen only has one electron. Okay, followed by helium, portal number with 2, and then 3 for lithium, 4 for beryllium, 5 for boron, and etc. Okay, so when the questions give you the proton number for each of the elements, you should be able to write down the electronic configurations because the in a neutral atom, the number of proton is the same as the number of electron. So when you got the information, then we can do um, for the uh, electronic configuration. So let's look at our element hydrogens with a proton number one. So we know the electronic configurations for hydrogen is 1s1. Okay, for helium, one more electrons adding to the same orbital because the maximum number in s orbital, it will be two electron. So 1s1, 1s2 from hydrogen and then towards helium. And then we go to the lithium, the third um, elements in the periodic table. It becomes 1s2 and the next electrons go to the next level, 2s1. And we have our neon with proton number 10, which means you have 10 electrons. So in this case, we will have our electronic configuration, 1s2, 2s2, remaining 6 electrons go to your 2p subshell. Okay, remember the number stated over here, it means the total number of electron. Okay, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And let's look at the sodium with a proton number of 11. We have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. One extra electrons go to the next level, which is 3s1. And let's look at one more example for our organ in group 18. So for argon 18 um, proton number, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. So all together, there is 18 electron. So Madam want you to look over here. If you realize for group 18 element, helium, neon, argon, cryptum, and xenon. 
Okay, so for helium, neon, and argon, it's quite common we can use in the electronic configurations, and all of them is maximum and completely filled. So we know for our group 18, the normal gas is very stable because they have completely filled orbitals. Okay, therefore, we can also use the normal gas electronic configurations using the symbol like this. Okay, uh, a square bracket inside we fill with uh, HE, which represent the 1s2, okay, electronic configurations for helium gas. And a square bracket inside we fill with neon, represent the electronic configurations for neon gas. And the square bracket with AR symbol represent the electronic configurations for argon gas. So all of this, we will use it to re represent the core configurations. Okay, in this case, the core, it also means the center, uh, or, or it can also mean the inner shell. So how many electrons are there in your inner shell? If there is two, then we use the representations of helium. If there is 10, then we use the representations of neon. If there is 18, then we use the representations of argon gas. You get remember, uh, core configuration. Okay, so but come back to the examples for lithium and sodium. Let's see how are we going to apply these core configurations uh, for two of these examples. So if you can see over here for lithium, the core is represent or resemble the helium electronic configuration. So we can use the helium as the core configuration, followed by your valence electronic configuration. Okay, so this one is the core, this one will be your valence electronic configuration. Okay, so for sodium, the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, which looks something like the configurations for neon gas, then we can use the symbol, the square bracket, inside the square bracket with the symbol of NE, followed by your valence electronic configuration. So we have 1s1, one valence electron, 2s1, one valence electron, 3s1, one valence electron. Okay, so we can also use it uh, for the core configurations to figure out what is your valence electronic configuration. The common core configuration we, we will use is helium, neon, and argon. Of course, sometimes you will also see krypton and xenon as the core. Uh, so you can practice writing out the electronic configurations for the um, cryptum and also xenon. If we take one more example, let's take the example of the chlorine. So chlorine, we have 17 proton number. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And then here we have already 12 electrons left with another 5. And these 5 electrons will go into the 3p subshell. Okay, so all together, 10, 12, 17. So if we're using the core configurations, you can see over here, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 represent the neon. So we use the symbol of NE, followed by the valence electronic configuration. Okay, so we know chlorine is come from your group 17. Therefore, it should have 7 valence electrons which is the same as your valence electronic configuration. 3s2, 3p5, altogether 7 valence electron. So please also jot down these examples in your notes and write down um, the valence electron, okay, which is 7. And this 3s2, 3p5 is actually your valence electronic configuration. So when you look at the question, sometimes the question will ask you to write down the valence electronic configuration. It refers to this one. Okay, the electronic configuration that hold your valence electron, including the 2s2 and 2p6. Besides uh, helium, because helium, there is only two electron maximum. So for argon, the valence electronic configuration will be your valence shell over here. Uh, the outer shell over here. So total 8 valence electrons. Total 8 valence electrons. Okay. So any problems until here?
No, madam. No, madam. Okay. If no uh, questions, Meadows have one interesting video, although it's not very informative, but hopefully can help you to remember a little bit. Okay. Let us stop presenting and I want to choose a tab to share with you. Hold on, yeah. So let me know if you can hear the sound system, yeah? Okay, can you see my screen now? Uh, unfortunately, we can't. Mm. As for now. All right. I, yes, we can now. Okay, very good. Through my online store alone, we've sold oh, over sorry. five hundred thousand dollars worth of spices. I Grammarly that, is your uh, personal writing assistant for clear emails, us, confident uh, messages, chat? stronger essays, and more. We'll go over the two different ways to write the electron configuration. Energy level is really small, it's just a mess with two electrons at all. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. A little bit larger, the second shell. Two sub bubbles therein do dwell. And a sub bubble makes that at 2 and 6 per free, if that's okay with you. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. Woo! The shell is even larger and nice and pop. Top of the bill, a d sub level is added on top. 10 electrons get a pop. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. The fourth shell is the. Uh, the video. Fun, fun, In enjoyable. This is actually very, a very catchy melody yeah, to help you to remember about uh, the 1s2, 2s2, and so on. So, Madam want to highlight over here in the video, if you can see over here for the first energy, 1s2, and then for the second energy level, we have 2 subshell, we represent the 2p2s and also 2p subshell. So in this one, you need to take into account the 2 and the 6. So in the second shell, we have 8 electrons. And then for the third shells over here, you have 3s, 3p, and also 3d, which you learn about this one, maximum number for each subshell. For s is 2, for p is 6, and then for d is 10. Okay, for this link, Madam will uh, share it to you later on in your Telegram group, uh, so you can watch the full video afterwards. Okay. 
So we go back to the the notes. Okay, come back to this one. So any questions about the core configurations here? I do. Yes. Um, the core configuration only Helium, Neon, and Argon. Eh? Maybe you can use from Krypton, Xenon, but because Krypton and Xenon, the number of electrons is too big. Uh, so it will be used, it still will be used sometime. If let's say cryptum, uh, and I want you to write the elements down in period six or period seven, maybe you can use up to cryptum or xenon. Uh, but the common one is helium, neon, or argon. A very good question, sir. Thank you. Uh, so basically speaking, the co configuration, you only take it from uh, group eight, isn't it? Yes, group eight, because group eight, you got the full configuration. Okay. So we can't actually use from other groups. Yeah, because right. other groups, uh, the number of electron maybe you're filling the last electron is only partially filled. It's not completely filled. So we will only use the group 18 uh, elements. All right, so we continue over here, yeah? So valence electrons, um, it's also the electrons from the outer shell that involve in the formations of chemical bonding. So as Madam showed you just now, the example valence electronic configurations represent how many valence electrons you have for that element or for the atom. Okay, so for example, over here, lithium uh, proton number, I think you're quite familiar, isn't it? 1s2 and then 2s1. Okay, three electrons altogether. So for this 2s1, it will be its valence electronic configuration. For foreign also, just now I've already shown you the example. If you've got 1s2, 2s2, and 2p5, then the outer shell, uh, if you realize uh, the number of your energy level n is the same. So 2s2, 2p5 is the valence electronic configuration. So seven valence electrons altogether. This is why it is important because next one, you want to predict the electronic configuration for ion uh, after you accepting or donating electron. So let's look at this one. Electronic configurations of monoatomic ion, okay? You may either lose or gain electrons to form a stable ion and then you will achieve, so after you're losing or gain electron, you will achieve the noble gas configuration. Okay, one word over here. Noble gas represent what? Group 8 element, 18 element. Represent your group 18. The one just now we mentioned, helium, neon, argon, and maybe some others, uh, group 18 elements. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and etc. Now going down the groups, yeah? Okay, so for example, sodium, 11 uh, proton number electro, uh, electron. Okay, so after you lose one of this electron, because you have one valence electron, so after donating one electron, you will achieve the noble gas configuration, which represent the neon. Uh, so this configuration is same as the neon, and you will form the Na plus after donating electron. So this one also something you have learned before. Uh, kalau dekat uh, secondary school, you learn about 2.8.1, isn't it? So after eliminate or after removing this one electron, then you achieve octet, uh, octet number. Yeah. Okay, so 2.8. It's something yeah, similar, but now in this level, you are going more in deep. You are looking into the subshell. Okay, you are in looking into the layers down below. Uh, so we are no more using the 2.8.1 point something. Uh, we are using the electronic configuration. So now after removing one, you achieve number guess of neon. And then for 4 e because you have seven valence electron, in order to achieve the octet, we need to accept one electron. Okay, gaining one electron. And then also you will achieve the noble gas uh, neon. So electronic configuration, the same, to become your F negative. Right. So if you recall back, 2.7, then turn into octet 2.8. But remember, we are not using this one anymore, but we are using the electronic configuration. So, Madam, show one example to you in the questions down below. 
in your notes huh, there is no uh answer so i guess you want to write down the answer together with me so for oxygen proton number is eight in order to write the ion you must first write out the atom first okay this proton number is always represent uh, for the neutral uh, atom or neutral element so oxygen eight electron we got one s two and I follow up to S2 and 2P4. 2P4. Four. So there is six valence electron. Okay, 2P, 2S2, 2P4. Altogether, six valence electron. Do we need to accept or donate electron to achieve octet? Yes. Accept. 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 How many? Two. 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 Uh, so if the question didn't ask O2 minus, you need to understand how to achieve the octet. Okay, so O2 minus is after accepting two electron and the two electron will go into the 2P because uh, you can achieve the maximum over here. So the electronic configurations for the ion O2 minus, it will become 1S2, 2S2 and 2P6. Okay, so for, for, for you to write out the SPDF notation for ion, you must write out both atom and also ion. All right, so Madam share a gem book. Uh, I want everyone to do for B and C, uh, potassium proton number 19, you write the K plus uh, SPDF notation and also for magnesium 2 plus. So you, everyone write down on your paper and Madam will choose two person or maybe two per, two people want to volunteer to write out the gen bot. Okay, let me share the gen bot with you first. So everyone now write now, you are given about two to three minutes. I think it's quite simple, right? For potassium and also magnesium. Okay, so now Madam share a gem file over here in the uh, message, in call message uh, column. Anyone volunteers to write out the electronic configuration for K plus? Anyone mind sharing? Madam, me. Thank you, Anna. So you may go to the Jambot over here for question uh, K plus, right? You can write down over here. Then we will see the answer uh, together. And anyone volunteers for um, MG2 plus? Say, Madam. Yes. Nama? Tadi Hana kan? Hana buat uh, yang... Ni, ini Atika. Atika Nadin. Yes. Thank you very much. The rest of you, don't forget to write down the result and then we shall check our answer together after your friend write out their answer, okay? So at the same time, if anyone have any questions, you may shout out your questions over here. Madam, am I the only one can access the link? Uh, how about the others? Same. Oh, cannot access. Let me check about the setting, yeah? I thought it's because of my internet connection. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, if you, I think Madam haven't changed the setting yet. Yes. Okay. How about now? Yes, I can see you. Uh, still loading. Okay. Permission Fine. updated. Yes, oh, already, so right. Enter already. Okay, so Hana for questions B and uh, Atika for question C. Yeah? You may just write down the K plus. 
Uh, so everybody write down the K, the original atom, the neutral one. And then Hana write down only the SPDF notation for K plus. Atika write down the SPDF notation for MG2 plus. Okay, so is there any other question from the rest of you? Are we waiting for your friends uh, to present, yeah? Lain-lain ada hmm, Ada nampak semua dengan what ya Bagusnya uh, Keep on going K plus and also MG2 plus For the uh, neutral and also for the ion Okay, have you done? Uh, yes. Okay, so let's see over here. We check our answer together and you mark your answer because this answer, madam, are not giving in the extra copies already. Okay, so for the questions inside the notes, you can jot down straight away. So for our K+, plus, Okay, the electronic configuration for K plus ion, it will represent argon. Okay, represent argon because if 19 K plus K is from group one, uh, group one elements, after removing one electron, achieving the electronic configuration as argon, 3S2, 3P6. Okay, whereas for Mg2 plus, originally we have 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, and 3S2. That is for neutral. And after removing two electron, you are achieving the electronic configuration as a switch noble gas. Helium, neon, or argon? Neon. 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 Okay, very good. Yeah. Right. So there is some more practice after what Madam wants you to submit inside the Google Classroom. Huh? So it also the same pattern. Uh, from the neutral and then find out the ion. Uh, madam. So next one, yes. So when we want to write the SPDF notation, do we need to include the con, uh, con configuration or just normally write it anyways? You just normally write it can. Uh, madam, teach the call because some of the question they will use the call. But you are not necessary to write the call. But if you want to, can. So either you write in full or with the call. Oh, so it's not mandatory? Cuma, not necessary, yes. Right. Cuma kalau untuk ion, sebab dia sudah nampak macam uh, noble gas kan, yang ini tak payah tulis call configuration. Uh, untuk ion, tak payah. Uh, uh, tulis yang biasa saja. Is that okay? All right, okay. Yeah, okay, let's move on to the next one. After you know how to identify the electronic configurations for ion, either I, uh, cation or anion, then the next thing is if what if the element has the proton number more than 20? Uh, because when the proton number getting higher and higher, it means your number of total electron also increases. Okay, then it will fall into 4S and 3D. So tadi kalau masih ingat, Nadam cakap kalau dia uh, masuk ke dalam 4S, 3D, something very complicated and you must uh, need to follow the rules accordingly. 
you know, so how do I say follow the rules accordingly? So you see over here, according to alpha principle or according to this raindrop diagram, electron will go into 4S before 3D. Nah, so kalau nak uh, tengok dekat sini, okay, after 3P, we fall into 4S. After 4S, then only it will come to 3D. Nah, so in front, we got 1S, 2S something, and then 2, 4S, 3D, and then only go back to 4P. Nah, so kalau ikut raindrop sini, ada scenario macam ni, 4S, 3D. So you must remember, according to our bulk, we need to fill in the electron into 4S first. Then after that, if you got some more electron, only you fill in the 3D. Now, so this is the key things you need to remember. So if we look at the example titanium, proton number 22, the orbital diagram, 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, and 3D2. Okay. So dekat sini, uh, dekat 3D ini kita ikut rules apa? If you see two of these single electrons, what rules does it obey? Hands rule. Hands rule. Hands rule. Hands rule. Kalau poly semua. Sebab awak nampak poly semua up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay. Kalau untuk 3D sahaja, dia ikut hands rule. Because electron fill in singly first before pairing up in degenerate orbitals. So, kalau nampak single dekat box yang tak sama ataupun line yang berbeza, dia adalah Hans rules. Okay, this is how you fill in the electrons. But what if we want to make an ion? Okay, so in order to form cation, you want to remove electron. Nak tambah tak ada masalah kalau nak keluarkan elektron macam mana? Kalau nak tambah, kita masukkan terus dekat D. Ha, sebab D masih ada kekosongan lagi. Uh, kalau nak tambah elektron, we just adding over here. One more, two more, three more, and etc. But then now the problem is, to remove electron, you must always remove from NS first before the N minus 1D. Eh, nampak macam complicated. Tapi imagine, kalau sekarang Madam mention, NS adalah for S. N minus 1D is the 3D. Okay. So just now we said fill in, fill in for S first. And then after that, 3D. If you want to remove, also remove from 4S first before 3D. So rules, they're simple. Masuk 4S dulu, keluar pun 4S dulu. So highlight this uh, keywords. Remove electron from 4S orbital before 3D. Okay, so let's look at the same example titanium. Just now we fill in 4S2, 3D2. Okay, now if I want to make a titanium 2 plus, we need to remove two electron. Okay, so first electron, it will come up from the 4S. Uh, nah, jadi Ti2 plus, kita kena keluarkan dua electron. So first electron for 4S, second electron also from 4S. So you will achieve this electronic configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 3d2. Okay, so now no more electron in the 4s, then we don't have to write it. So if I want to further the example into titanium 4 plus, that means I need to remove four electron from the original neutral parent atom. Uh, so dekat sini 4s2, 3d2, ada 4. So first two from 4s. And then after that, another two electrons from 3D. Then you will achieve the electronic configuration. 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. So again, the final configuration for this one, titanium 4 plus, is look like the normal gas. Okay, it looks like the normal gas is already full. So if we want to compare Ti, Ti2 plus, Ti4 plus, which ion is the most stable? then we will go for the titanium 4 plus. Sebab lepas awak keluarkan keempat-empat elektron, you achieve the normal gas electronic configuration, which is the most stable. Do you get me? Yes. Okay. So kena ingat eh, rules kalau ada elemen yang lebih daripada uh, 20 proton number. 
you must always remember fill in 4s before 3d remove from 4s before 3d all right so there is one more examples over here two more examples huh? we write together for the neutral one and then i will need another two volunteers to write out the following examples so let's try this one together okay manganese proton number 25 1s2 2s2 2p6 and you follow 3s2 yes 6 4s2 and 3d 5 5 so everyone, please check your electronic configuration for this manganese. Huh? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 4s2, 3d5. Follow alpha 4s first before 3d. So all together, we have 25. 10, 20, 25. Okay. How about for cobalt? CO is cobalt uh you have the proton number of 27 so this one 25 this one 27 then what will be is uh electronic configuration 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 and 3d7 3d7 10 20 27 so all together, the numbers over here represent the total electron as well as the proton number. Okay. So now, can I have two volunteers again? Um, Madam, want you to write out the manganese 2 plus and also the cobalt 2 plus. Also in the same uh, gem board. It will be under... Third slide and the fourth slide. Any volunteer for mag magnesium, um, magnesium, manganese 2 plus? Me. Any virus? Very good, thank you. So, how about cobalt 2 plus? Any volunteers? Uh, me. Aziz, okay. Cobalt two, two, right? Yes, cobalt two plus. All right. Uh, where should I write it in the Jamboard? Because that. Yes, please. So you write out. Uh, Aziz, oh, yeah. write out on the first. Uh, on the fourth slide. And if I write out on, on the. Uh, under fourth. All right. Yeah, under four. Yes. So the rest of you, you try for manganese 2 plus and manganese 7 plus. If 7 plus, very easy after you know how to remove the first electron. Okay, or cobalt 4 plus. So in the meantime, the rest of it, if there any questions you may ask. So we're waiting for your friends to um, show their, share the answer. You also need to do it, yeah? Just some reminder to you, everything that we learned in 2.2 and 2.3 uh, will be continued in Chapter 3. Uh, 3.1, we still were using electronic configuration. And how are we going to match into the periodic table? Uh, so you need to really understand the valence electron, the electronic configuration, and so on. So it will be easier when we come into Chapter 3. Okay?
Uh, all right, done. I'm sorry for the uh, not so adequate hand hand or screenwriting because uh, I'm not used to Jamboard. It's okay, Azim. I think most of you over here is the first time to Jamboard. Because the survey say uh, some of you heard of but haven't tried it or don't know how to use. Actually, very simple. If you got, uh, you can write straight away or you can type in. Kalau rasa, macam susah-susahnya, nak tulis, tak apa, boleh type je. Dekat sini ada satu T over here, you can actually type your text. Okay, but a very good try. I think you are very expert. Okay, so now we have already got the answer from Farus. Okay, MN2 plus, and now she's writing for the MN7 plus. Okay, so MN2 plus. Is everyone agreeing that we have this electronic configuration? We have 1S2, yes. 2S2, yes. 3S2, 3P6, and 3D5. Okay, when you're achieving this one, it means that uh, you remove the first two electrons from where? 4S. 4S2. 4S2. So after that, if we want to further remove another 5 to become 7 positive, okay, then you will remove the outermost electron from 3D. Uh, so you will achieve the normal gas configuration 3S2, 3P6, which is the same as the argon gas. Okay, well done, Virus. All right, and then next, uh, for this one, any question from uh, the others? And this one left. No, no, no. Okay, Hana, Hana, ada soalan nak tanya? No, uh, The power is oh, yeah. one. Do we need to write one or we just leave it? Which one? No, if the question somehow need to uh, give us uh, like example one as one lah, power of one. Do we need to write the one or? Yes, yes. You need to write the one because one represent that's one electron. Uh, so for this electronic configuration, even though it's one, you need to write up. Uh, right, like this one, right? N value is one, you need to write down. Okay, very good question, sir. Dia bukan matematik. Ini ialah simbol. Kalau matematik, one, kalau tak tulis, kita faham. Matematik itu adalah satu. Uh, tapi electronic configuration, satu yang bilangan satu represent bilangan elektron. Uh, so kena tulis. Good question, sir. Thank you. And for the answer for cobalt, okay, so CO2 plus, we have 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, and 3D7. Everyone agree? Yes. 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 Okay, so removing the first two electrons from the 4S. How about if I want CO4 plus? 7 plus. How about if I want to remove uh, It's on two. the next slide. Uh, sorry for being late. Oh, wow. Thank you. So then, this one is an extra, yeah? Okay. So if we want to further remove another two electrons, we will remove from this D orbital. So here, the D orbital remains 7. If you want to further remove another two, then it will remain 3D5. Okay, okay. very good. Thank you. Well done. So for both of this answer, you may jot down uh, MN2 plus, MN7 plus, okay? And then CO2 plus and CO4 plus. So I give a, a little bit of uh, time for you to mark your own answer. Okay, and then for cobalt, this is CO2 plus. So everything the same until here for S is missing because now for S doesn't have any electron, so we don't have to write out. And it, and followed by 3D7. And CO2 plus, uh, sorry, CO4 plus, it remains with 3D5. All right, so everyone's okay with this? 
Yes. Yes, madam. All right. So let's just continue. There is a final part for chapter 2.3. Okay, so this is a very interesting part now because it combines all things that you have learned before, but it shows the anomalous case. Okay, you look at the titles over here, anomalous filling patterns of electron. Anomalous over here, uh, nama macam grain sangat kan? Ada orang yang mention anomala, anomalous, uh, something. Okay, anomalous actually means something very special. Let me write down, yeah? You can jot down also in your notes. It means something very special. Hold on. Okay. It means something special. Or it means something abnormal. Or it means something unusual. The usual one that is, it means, it refers to when we obey above up our principle when we obey police exclusion principle when we apply Hans rules okay so the anomalous case some rules over here is not saying disobey dia bukan tak patuh tapi dia punya cara susunan ada lain sikit ah like like uh, unusual patterns to arrange the electron okay and this anomalous case it only got one reason is due to the unusual stability of the completely or halfly filled 3D subshell. Okay, Madam will explain about this sentence using the example below. Okay, so for the example below, so over here, you can only see two columns. Okay, that means the anomalous case, we only refers to chromium, okay, with the proton number 24, and also copper proton number 29. So you must remember the symbol as well, CRCU, proton number 24, 29. Okay, other than that, we are not, uh, we are not uh, looking for it anymore. Uh, so only two of this example, you must remember and understand. Okay, so let's look at this chromium first. If we use the alpha principle according, accordingly, we will achieve this electronic configuration. The first one, uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, followed by 4s2 and 3d4. Okay, so uh, you have six valence electrons over here. Okay, six valence electrons over here, 4s2, 3d4. Right, but then, why we say it is anomalous feeling? Because in actual, uh, the electronic configuration does not really follow alpha principle. Okay, but it will arrange like this. 1s2 until 3p6, the same. And then 4s2 become 4s1. 3d4 become 3d5. Why do we say so? So let's do this one uh, beside your table. Ah, ini tulis sekali eh dalam awak punya nota ataupun uh, buku nota awak. Okay, so we look only at the 4S and 3D subshell. So for 4S, 4S2, this one is following alpha, I'll are, are, are writing the alpha over here, yeah? Okay, so 4S2, we have two electrons. One up, one down. And then 3D, we have one, two, three, four. 3D4, four, four electrons. So actually, for this orbital diagram or this electronic configuration, you only have the partially filled d orbital. Ah, uh, partially filled. That means part of the orbitals are filled. So it means it can means you have d one, or means you have d two, or means you have d three or d four. Ah, uh, all of these are partially filled which is unstable. Tulis kat sini. D1, D2, D3, D4, partially filled is unstable. Okay. Therefore, the system itself will automatically rearrange this uh, electron because total number of electron is still six. Then they will try to rearrange. 
Okay, so the actual electronic configuration. Okay, so this one is the actual. 4S to become 4S1. Okay, because this one is completely filled, this one is halfly filled. And then the 3D from 3D4, it become 3D5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then in this case, we will say the halfly filled orbital. Now, the list gets in 3D5 halfly filled. Is the halfly filled orbital. Half fill, halfly fill. Okay, 3D orbitals. Is more stable. Okay, more stable. So you will compare for chromium. We will prefer to have all half fill uh, orbitals compared to the partially fill orbital. So kalau mungkin ada soalan, madam, kenapa 4s dia kena ubah? So if you remember, uh, you you look at the 4s. If both are filled, this one completely filled is stable. But when you move one of the electrons to the next empty orbital, it becomes half filled, also stable. Okay, only the partially filled orbital is unstable. That means 3D1, 2, 3, 4, partially filled, unstable. So in this case, we will prefer to have the half, uh, halfly filled uh, 3D orbitals, which is the actual one. So in your electronic configurations, you will follow for S1, 3D5. Of course, in the exam, you need to write out both. Uh, kena tulis kedua-dua. Ikut afal, nampak dulu 4S2, 3D4. Lepas susun balik, dapat 4S1, uh, 3D5. So the reason, very simple. If for chromium, because we see the halfly field orbital, then the reason will because of the uh, half field 3D orbital is more stable. Nah, ataupun dalam ayat yang dalam nota yang mendem bagi, the anomalous electronic configuration is due to the stability of the half field in bracket 3D5 orbitals. Catat lagi satu ayat yang simple lagi lah kalau awak nak ikut ayat itu. Uh, because the 3D5, in bracket, half field orbital is more stable. Uh, dua dua ayat awak boleh guna. Okay, so this one is for chromium. Is that any questions? No. Uh, so basically speaking, when all the orbitals are filled with electrons, it it be more stable. Yes, it's like uh, your group eighteen, right? Why we say noble gas is very stable because all the electrons is filled. Uh, all the orbitals is completely packed. Okay, so in this case, only chromium and copper. Chromium, if you look at over here, we want to arrange all of the electrons or the orbitals are halfly filled. Uh, so we say the halfly filled 3D5, only 3D5, I don't mention about 4S. Uh, because hot 4S doesn't matter, two electrons or one electrons, they are still stable. So we only mention for 3D. Uh, so this one partially unstable, no, no. This one is halfly filled. Every, every orbital has one electron. That means they are stable. Then the stability achieved. Okay, stability due to the half field 3D5 orbitals. All right. And let's look at the copper. Uh, copper, again, the same thing. Must remember about the number of proton. Okay, proton number 29. You have 29 electron. So if according to our file, kita isi, sebidik uh, macam tadi, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and... 4s2, 3d9. So now, if according to the alpha principle, we have 4s2, and then 3d9, following Hans rule, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, singly first, before pairing up, then we have 1, uh, sorry, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So now, this one, you have only d9 uh, electron, which is also partially filled. So, ingat tadi yang atas kita cakap, D1, D2, D3, D4 is partially filled. 
same thing according to this one d6 7 8 9 are partially filled so the partially filled orbital is unstable so in order to achieve the stability we need to rearrange okay the electron so all together over here we have 11 electrons so balik saja lah okay so macam mana nak susun for s two electron complete also stable halfly feel also stable so kita pinjang satu elektron ini untuk letak kat 3d okay so now for your 3d from d9 it becomes d10 okay from d9 it becomes d10 so now this d10 orbital is completely filled okay completely filled therefore this is stable and we prefer a stable electronic configuration okay therefore the actual electronic configurations look like this 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 and you have 4s1 3d 10 the reason also similar like chromium is due to the stability of the completely filled 3d10 orbital another simple words you can also jot down over here this is because the completely filled 3d10 orbital is more stable uh, when we say more stable you are actually doing comparison uh, what berbandingan uh, uh, antara awak punya completely filled orbital dengan partially filled orbital uh, but in this case you don't have to mention the partially filled because more stable have already indicate the 3d10 is more stable therefore i choose 3d10 do you get me yes thank you Okay, so chat lagi satu ayatnya, uh, 3D, uh, completely fill 3D10 orbital is more stable. Yang atas tadi boleh tulis satu ayat yang uh, ringkas sikit lah, ataupun senang sikit nak awak hafal, ataupun faham. Half fill 3D5 orbital is more stable. Okay, a simpler sentence. All right, so in conclusion, so over here, first thing first, of course, you only remember about chromium copper, portal number 24, 29. And one more thing for you to summarize from this um, subtopic is the completely filled or half filled D orbitals, which represent your, sorry, completely is D10, halfly filled D orbital is D5. It doesn't matter 3D10, 4D10, 5D10, uh, it can be. Or 3D5, 4D5, uh, 6D5, uh, as long as it's D5 half filled or D10 completely filled. It's more stable than the partially filled D orbital. Uh, so partially, partially filled D orbital, that means other than these two number. It can be D1, D2, D3, D4, or d6 7 8 or 9 so all of this is unstable but you only refer to chromium and copper as example uh, yang, ben, yang element lain tak ada eh uh, element lain macam titanium macam zinc ah uh, tak ada cuma chromium dengan copper sahaja so any question up until here Is there any questions, Mo? No. No teacher, okay je. Okay, je. okay, right. So, we have done for our chapter 3 actually. Nah, cuma semua teori-teori yang awak belajar nanti kita akan applykan dalam soalan. Exam soalan bukan simple macam tadi lah. Nah, tulis uh, untuk magnesium 2 plus, untuk list untuk K plus. No, it will be slightly more complicated than this. Okay, but I want you to make sure you know how to write out the electronic configuration first. So, here you go. The one that Madam, Madam ticked over here is your homework. Okay, so for questions number one, 
um, A, B, D, write down the sets of quantum number. Ah, sets of quantum number revision also. Uh, your nasi, lemak, masak, sama. Ah, tuliskan set of quantum number of the electrons. Maksudnya kalau ada satu, tulis satu set. Dua, tulis dua set. Empat, tulis empat set. Enam, tulis enam set. Each electron will have one set uh, respectively. Uh, individual sets of setiap electron ada nasi lemak sendiri eh. Okay. Question number two. You have to do question A, B, C. D and E for your own practice. The one you need to submit is A, B, C. So this one you write the electronic configuration using the proton number. Uh, so proton number 9, 17 and 22. Question C, write the SPDF notation and draw orbital diagrams. Can I do the eh? SPDF notation and orbital diagram. Orbital uh, diagram. Madam, uh, the electronic configuration is just, just like how you do the just now, isn't it? Uh, 1S2, 2S2, those. Okay. All right, noted. All right. So uh, orbital diagram, you can either choose you want to use the box or you want to use the line. So I want you to do question number three, A, B, C, and also G, H, I. The A, B, C is the neutral atom. G, H, I is the ion. Uh, so remember, if for ion, you want to do for the neutral atom first, and then after that, followed by the electronic configurations of the ion. Tapi orbital diagram cuma ikut ion sajalah, neutral tak payah. So, submit dekat mana? Okay, classroom. Google classroom by 28th of August, yeah? Okay, yeah, madam. So, jot down first for your... Um, for question number four, this one is the exam style questions. So, nampak tak dia tak sama dengan apa yang kita practice sebelum ni? Cuma dia akan compilekan semua soalan dalam uh, cara tanya yang berbeza. So we will explore some more questions next week. Okay, so question number four also you may try and then we will check the answer together. Also, there is some more exercise altogether 11 questions. I need contoh-contoh soalan exam. Uh, soalan UPS ke, PSPM ke, uh, ada masuk sekali untuk kita praktis sama-sama. Okay, all of these 11 questions, Madam will look at it and the le next week lesson on Sunday. Uh, so you may try first. Oh, nampak soalan tiga ni interestingnya. Masuk sekali shape of orbitals. So what is the relationship between shape of orbitals with the uh, electronic configuration, uh, with the charge of ion, with the quantum number NLM, Ah, semua ni ada kaitan. Uh, that means from 2.2, 2.3, they are actually linked together. So you may try to look at the question first and try it. Next week, we were going to see uh, the method to answer this kind of questions. Okay, so any questions you would like to ask before we go further into the small quiz? Uh, madam. Yes, if so, you are joining. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Finish the experiment. Uh, no, i do it later because it oh. needs time to wait also. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, for the cation, right, uh, the electron is removed from uh, 4, 4 S before 3D. Yes. Uh, so if we were to um, draw the orbital diagram, mm -hmm. the 4 S Orbital will just leave it blank or no need to write. Uh, no to write. Write. Oh, and so uh, then. After so you write 3P uh, and then go uh, straight into 3D. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, Thank very you, good man. question. Similar like the questions just now, just now who asked. Uh, uh, Madam, perlu tak kita tulis uh, yang kosong minyak tak ya? Uh, for the orbital diagram as well as the electronic configuration. If there is no electron, we don't have to write. In this okay. case. Okay. Okay, thank you, Madam. Right. Any other questions? That is all I like. It's 
No questions. Let's do some quiz. Okay. So for this quiz, Meta is not sharing uh sharing the link. Uh. We straight away enter the code. So you may open your your what is that called? Your apps first, or you if you're using a laptop or desktop, you can open a new tab and I will show you the code. Okay. Uh, Madam, where's the link? Yeah, Madam is not sharing the link, but you enter the code for uh, this quiz. Huh? Uh, the, code, the code is 730223. Uh, we enter using yeah, this using, code. You enter the game code. All right. Is it? All right. Yes, crazy. So again, now we have the six questions. You answer first, and then afterwards we will see how many of you got it correct, how many of you got it wrong, uh, what do you get it wrong, and what is the reason behind each of the questions. Okay, but Madam need to remove my speaker, uh, my, my earphone, uh, because I take behind. So if madam uh, talking like this, can you listen to my voice? Yes, madam. Yes. I beg your pardon? Boleh dengar tak madam punya suara kalau madam cakap macam ni je? Boleh madam. Sikit-sikit lah. Is it cheeky or blur? A bit blurry. Blur. I'm not sure. Blur. I'm not sure. Blur. Blur. <laughs> not sure is clear. You see my earphone? <laughs> Okay, because if I plug in the earphone, you can't listen to the voice of this queasy or video. I didn't just realize, huh? Because I'm using earphone. Therefore, some of you may not listen or may not hearing the voice of the video play or the queasy sound. So never mind. Later, Madam will plug in again. Okay, sixty-four. Another ten more to go. MS seven, MS eight, MS nine. 67. Okay, almost ready. You ready? Yes. Yes, yes, madam. Yes, yes madam. All right, 74. One more missing. All right. So let's just start. There are six questions. Huh? Please uh, read the questions carefully and choose your answer accordingly. Yeah. 
Well done, keep on going. I can see you're answering quite actively. Well, this is quite better than I expected. Yes, this one is according to your own timing. MS9 on the first place, Fifi MS7 on the second, Aquila MS7 on the third. Well done. Okay, have you all done? Yes, we're done. Yes, we're done. Okay, so more that's yet, Malong. Yes. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hold on, yeah. So how do you find the questions? Quite easy, to be honest. Quite easy. Wow, very good. I think some of you are still answering. Saya ikut gerak hati. Apa, Yafan? Saya ikut gerak hati. <laughs> Macam mana nak ikut berhati? Okay. Soalan last tu saya tak tahu. Soalan last. Okay. Ada beberapa student yang tak boleh access. Tak apa. Nanti Madam share link balik untuk awak practice balik lah ya. Okay. Line ada yang comment line tak berapa elok eh. Okay. No problem. So let's look at the questions. Okay, we see the leaderboard first, yeah? Okay, we have Ali, Fifi, Akila, Maisara, Chloe. Chloe got two account. And then TJ, Hafi. Oh, Ali. this is the first time I thought 11. <laughs> you thought 11? Ah, yes. very well done, no? Nah? So about enam soalan saja kan? Senang kan? Ah, okay. No problem. So, Madam will explain this again. So, some of you maybe cannot access. Huh? No problem. Later, Madam share link for the bottom server here. You will try it again. Okay. Fat Farihim, Nazmi, Myra, Chloe. Chloe got name on her birth. Huh? And then, uh, uh, Cairo. Cairo is not joining. Aisha, line is a little bit, uh, line tak bagus kan? Ada bagi tahu madam lah. Okay, so let's look at these uh, questions. Okay, so for questions number one. Ada yang masih, masih, masih answer lagi tak? Kalau tak madam end questions dulu. No? Okay. 
All right, so first go to Ali, second goes to Fifi, and the third goes to Husna. So let's look at the, wow, a lot of you got 100% now. Nah? And we want to look at the analysis of the questions. Okay, so let's look at the first question over here. How many electrons does a SI contain? So inside here, we have a silicon icon over here. So how many electrons? And how do you know that? Uh, already stated at the corner of the box, 14. 14, because the proton number itself is the number of electrons. So the answer will be 14. Okay, you got, got about 3% get incorrect, yeah? And for question number 2, electronic, can you see my screen? The answer, uh, the, the, the questions? Yes, madam. Yes, yes madam. Okay. Right. The electronic configurations of an atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Total number of electron. The correct answer goes to? 7. 7, because you add up all of them. Okay. And for questions, and very good, got 78 of you got it correct. And for the third questions, electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And the number of balanced electron is? Two. 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 Because we're only taking the valence electronic configuration, which is 3s2. It means two valence electron. Well done, 73 of you got it correct. Okay. And then question number four. Which of the following is the electronic structure of a metal with a maximum oxidation state of positive three? Positive three, that means you remove three electrons. So you need to accordingly look at each of the uh, electronic configuration. First one, you got 3s1. So supposedly the oxidation state is positive one. Okay. Um, the second one is a normal gas. So the oxidation number is not quite often because normal gas doesn't form any, um, it doesn't form any ion. But if the oxidation state, it will be positive A. Okay. Right. And then for the third one, the valence electronic configuration, 3S2, 3P1, you got three valence electrons in total. Therefore, the answer goes to the third one, uh, which form the oxidation number of positive three. Oxidation number is the same as the charge that you're going to form. Okay. And then the last electronic configuration, Kalau nak jadikan dia sebagai ion, awak akan jadi uh, oxidation state apa? You got 4S2 as the valence electronic configuration. So what will be the yes. oxidation positive? 2. 2. Okay. So the answer will be the third one, uh, 3S2, 3P1, 3 valence electron. Okay. And then question number 5. We got 74 correct. So let's look at the questions, huh? According to the Aufbau principle, electrons are filled into 4s orbital before 3d. When removing the electrons, the electrons need to be removed from which subshell first? You have 4s. 4s. <laughs> so 74, if you got it correct. And then the last question. Ah, chromium, the, uh, proton number 24. So, just tadi Ifan cakap soalan ni ya. Are so, you? Chromium. Show anomalous electronic configuration. So, dekat sini dia sudah bagi yang actual minya kan. Nampak 4S1, 3D5. So, well done. 77 of you got it correct. And this is due to the halfly fill or the halfly D orbital 3D5 is more stable. Eh, bukan yang ni ke? Electronic configuration tadi. Ah, uh, you uh, valence electron daripada electronic configuration. Baru akan oh. nampak dia punya charge apa. Okay. Okay. Woo. So over here lah. Uh.
So the one that you find is uh, missing in this one. Also oh, quite a lot of you missing over here. Uh, so maximal oxidation state positive three, then it goes to this one. That's still uh, quite a lot of you um, mixed up these questions here. So you need to understand how to figure out valence electron. Yang ini akan ulang lagi sekali dalam chapter three. Okay, so valence electron one, valence electron we got eight, valence electron we got three, and valence electron here we got uh, for S2 and the 3D 10. Here is a little bit uh, susun ikut 3D dulu baru for S eh. And then the half bulb, most of you got it correct. And then for the chromium, also most of you got it correct. Okay, so any question for this six uh, soalan yang tanya dekat kuisi? Okay, ada soalan lagi? Okay, if no questions, yeah. uh, the exercise is already uploaded into your Google, uh, upload, uh, it's already created a column in your Google Classroom. Okay, but maybe I want to summarize a little bit for what we have learned today. So for the learning outcome, okay, electronic configurations, three of these we have discussed all together. So by the end, by the end, it's already at the end. Okay, alpha poly exclusion Hans rule. Okay, overall, three of these rules is are used for you to construct your electronic configuration as well as to help you uh, organize or arrange your electron into orbital diagram. Now, orbital diagram either using box or using line. Okay, and then after that, we have also looked into valence electronic configuration. So, take notes uh, for those who are uh, who not really understand about valence electronic configurations, you need to practice some more. So, let's say, madam, give you uh, some examples over here. Can you tell me what is the electronic uh, valence electronic configurations for this um, SPDF notation? Five. Five. Okay, valence electron is 5, but what is the valence electronic configuration? 3s2, 3p3. Okay, so 3s2, 3p3. So this is the valence electronic configuration. If I want to shortcut or so, I can use the core configurations of neon and then followed by my valence electronic configuration. Okay, and also we have looked into electronic configurations of ion. Okay, by losing or accepting electrons to form the normal gas configuration similar to helium, neon, or argon. Maybe sometimes use krypton or xenon, uh, but because number of electron is quite a big number, therefore the common one will be three of this first. All right. And then when you're accepting the electrons, you're going to form an ion. For example, if you're accepting one electron, it becomes X negative. Accepting two electrons. Two electron becomes x2 negative, accepting three electron becomes uh, x3 negative, and so on. When you're losing electron, you are forming the cation. That means if I am losing one, it becomes x positive one. Accepting two x positive, uh, sorry, losing two uh, x2 positive, losing three electron, it becomes x3 positive. Okay, so uh, need to keep in mind lah, accepting all. Uh, removing the electrons. So you need to start with the electronic configurations for the parent atom. So you know from where I need to remove electron, especially when it comes to the 4S 3D subshell. Uh, or maybe sometimes if you will refer to 5S 4D, or maybe it will refer to 6S 5D, and so on. Uh, but the common one is 4S 3D. Fill in, fill in 4S before 3D. Remove, also remove from 4S before 3D. Okay. Last one, the anomalous case or anomalous filling patterns of the electron, you need to remember for chromium and copper. Proton number 24, proton number 25. And also the reason also quite important uh, uh, for chromium is because of the halfly filled 3D5 orbital is more stable. If for copper, 
is due to the completely filled 3D 10 orbital, which is more stable. So reason you need to understand how to write the electronic configuration also, you need to be able to write out follow up and also the actual one. Right, so we have done for our chapter two. So, Madam would like to collect a few things. I want to collect what is in your memory so far for chapter 2.2, your nasi lemak masak sambal. Okay, tapi jangan bagi nasi lemak ya dalam yang keywords dia. Madam nak tahu keywords apa yang awak ingat. So, what is the keywords that come into your mind when we talk about quantum number? Okay, and also electronic configuration. Okay, so maybe you want to write out one or two words. So can you please scan this QR code? So when you scan the QR code, it will pop up some uh, blank space for you to write out the keywords. Uh, so keywords apa yang you ingat dalam chapter 2.2 dengan 2.3. Do you able to scan the QR code? Uh, two words only, isn't it? it? One or two words, yes. One or two words. Maybe you remember about one, then you write that one. Maybe you remember both or lots of the keywords you you remember, then you write out. So we, we, we want to see uh, what is the keywords that majority of you um, agree. Uh, Will you be able to scan the QR code? Yes, madam. Okay. Okay, so keep on typing, tapping, tapping, tapping. So see which keywords do you still remember when we talk about nasi lemak? When we talk about the electronic configuration? Okay, so I can see a majority of you SPDF notation. I can see MLMS. I can see anomalous, well done. I can see energy level. I can see core configuration. I can see remove the electron for 4S then 3D. Well done. L determining M. And I can see degenerate. Well done. So all of the keywords that you remember actually reflect your second chapters. Uh, this chapter, a lot of new keywords. And chapter three also will have a lot of keywords too. Okay, tapping some, some more, some more, some more. Let me see what else you'll see. Raindrops, prob probability. Probability of finding an electrons. Okay, you remind me of that. I can see nasi lemak masak sambal. I can see singly before, hey, where is it? Jumping, missing. Singly before Perry. I can see the sets of quantum number. Well done. Halfly fill. I can see CUCR, the anomalous case. I can see he 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 he. Apa itu? Apa yang tak he 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 he? Tak ingat langsung eh yang he 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 punya. Okay, what else do we see? Subshell. Alpha principle. Okay, for alpha principle, remember, remember the A will be a capital letter A. Yeah? Okay, clockwise orientation. 
can see what is interesting over here. Degenerates of vitals, raindrops, abnormal, spin. Okay, very good. So that means the main things about chapter 2.2, 2.3, slightly different from 2.1 because 2.1 majority is calculation. Okay, so 2.2, 2.3 is mainly about a new concept uh, that you learn and need to apply. Okay. So I think that's all. Okay, let Madam stop the poll. Oh, I, I did share this one first. Lah. Okay. Okay, so that's it for our lesson for today. Madam Eng ends the lesson a little bit earlier today. And uh, for the next, ses uh, next session, you don't leave first. Huh? Madam will choose five person to stay uh, in this Google Meet. Okay, five person to stay in this Google Meet. And then the rest of you and Madam, myself, will leave the Google Meet. So, uh, in chat, Rosti and Buan Zyphirus. Can I uh, choose and then let them stay, right? Okay, Mr. Lee, eh? Dah siap, eh? Ah, dah siap. So, ah, uh, dah siap dah. Okay, pilih lima, lima student lah. Daripada hari ni kehadiran penuh berapa, eh? Uh, penuh dengan ada extra lagi sebab kelas lagi ada yang masuk yang masuk so berapa kehadiran ke semua pelajar boleh nah, check ah, kalau kita tu kalau kita tengok dekat partisipan tu ada 88 tolak i and check rosdi and then dua account saya dua account you eh so 84 84 Uh, semua pelajar berapa? Uh, untuk hari ini punya kelas sebenarnya uh, MS7, MS8 dengan MS9 saja Satu kelas 25 orang So total 75 Yang tambahan adalah daripada MS32 Sebab mereka so, dah habis kelas So mereka join lah ada yang join ada yang tak lah uh. Oh so yang kelas you sebenar berapa? 75 untuk hari ini punya 75. So, attendance yang hadir? Ada dua orang tak hadir. Dua orang. So, 30, eh, 73. Yes. Okay. So, okay. Uh, Iwa pilih tiga, eh, sorry, lima student lah. From random class, eh? Ah, uh -uh, random class. Okay. MS7, um, Elwi. And MS8, can I have uh, Ajay? Ajay is here? Ajay, Elwin, and then Putri, Putri Balkis, MS8, ada? Muhammad Hazim, boleh. Sorry? Muhammad Hazim. Mama Hazim, Mama Hazim say. Yeah. <laughs> Mama Hazim. Uh -huh. Hazim, Alwin. Alwin, Alwin. Ajay eh? Ajay ada? Su, Su, Su Jin Yi. Su Jin Yi, Su, Su, do you see here? Uh, yes. Uh, It's not okay. okay. Uh. Ada seorang lagi. Uh. It's more boys eh? Uh, panggil dah. Uh, Ada. Okay, uh, Putri ada eh, Putri? Fairos ke? Fairos Zawani. Ya, yeah, Fairos Zawani. Oh, Girl, seorang. Okay, Fairos already. Okay. <laughs> okay. Girl siapa okay. ya tadi tu? Yang... Fairos. Uh, Fairos Zawani. Fairos, uh, Fairos uh, stay ya? Uh. Okay. So, uh, let me repeat sekali lagi eh. Alwin, uh, Hazim, AJ, Sue and also 
Pyros. Oh, Bal uh, Balkis orang lihat. Uh, Anda boleh tak sebab terpanggil seorang yang... Boleh. Uh, Balkis Balkis uh, Balkis juga, ya. Yeah. So, terpanggil seorang tambah. Uh, okay. boleh, the boleh. rest of you uh, may leave the session. Uh, minta izin kan. Uh, Encik Roti dengan Puan Zaifiru saya pun left juga, ya. Yeah. Okay. 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 The thank rest you, of you, thank you. I'll see you again on thank Sunday, ya. Yeah. Sunday. Uh, thank you, Madam. Right. Thank you. Stop. Thank you, Madam. 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 Thank you, Madam.